All right, no pictures, no interviews, no, 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 none of that. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Do you people see what I have to deal with on this show? Do you really feel my pain? Well, either way, welcome to another episode of Books and Beer, your exceptionally erratic exploration of the world of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and tonight we are talking about National Novel Writing Month, aka NaNoWriMo, and how to handle NaNoWriMo like a pro. So, Evo, what are you, uh, oh yeah, fix your hair, fix your hair, yes, get, get pretty, get pretty. That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, I am enjoying a super monk Belgian IPA by the fine folks of Santam Brewery right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Nice. Well, I have cracked my first dogfish head uh, pumpkin of the season. Yeah. Whereas once upon a time that used to be the flagship pumpkin beer, now there are 4,972 of the buggers. And uh, it's good, but I'm not sure it's the best anymore. I have to raise their game, I think. Yep, yep. Lots of pumpkins, lots of seasonals. Glad that we are both excited to go seasonal today and not the boring everyday stuff. Yes. Okay. So NaNoWriMo, a topic that I know whips you into a frenzy of joy. So I promised, I promised not to bash NaNoWriMo. Um, I'm really good at that, but I'm going to try really hard and, and, and not do that. Because reality is, look, NaNo is fine. It, whatever it takes to convince you that you can write a book too... Uh, you can. Jeff, you want to explain Nano for the folks at home who may go borrow? Yeah, so NaNoWriMo is, uh, for the month of November, you write a novel, 50,000 words. Um, it's 50 or 70? 50. 50. Uh, in one month. And they specifically pick November because it has obstacles like uh, Thanksgiving and, and prepping for the holidays in there. Uh, but the point birthday. Yes, yes, in your mom's birthday. The point being, if you can get up and write, I think it works out to about 1,800 words every single day, by the end of the month, you will not only have a rough draft of a novel, but you'll have a brand new set of habits. You will now be in the mode of writing every day, which is essential if you really want to be an author. So that's what it is on paper, so to speak. The problem, I think, with it, and where you and I both have issues and... Um, what we're doing this particular episode to address, or that a lot of people take that on November 31st and go, yay, my book is done, and they copy it over into Amazon.com and they hit publish. And what they've done is floated a small turd out to sea. And it's usually met with about the enthusiasm of the aforementioned metaphor. Yes, and that exactly is right. We So what we want to do today... Rather than bash on Nano, because as Jeff said, anything that gets your butt in chair and shows you that, huh, if I sit down for two hours a day, every day, for the next 30 days, I will have 50,000 words cranked out. You will not have 50,000 words of fantastic cranked out, but nonetheless, you will have that one. So what we want to talk about is some things you should be doing also, in addition to, so that when it's time to publish, you've done more than just slam out words on paper, right? Exactamundo. So, Eva, what would you say is step number one for someone so, to handle NaNoWriMo like a pro? So, step one. Um, well, well, obviously, a quick little step back, you know, write your ass off. Obviously, that's, that is the biggest step one. But we're going to assume you've, got, you've gotten through all of that stuff. So, what I would suggest you do, if you're thinking about NaNo, it doesn't start for another couple of days. You have an opportunity to actually start building your list. The marketer deep inside of me um, knows that it's really stinking important to get people excited about what it is that you're doing. And if you really are serious about this, and you really will have a book coming out, then like a lot of authors, you probably have already reserved the domain name. By the way, spoiler alert, you do not have to. I'm not suggesting you do that. But I am suggesting that you start a launching soon page. And I suggest a company that's called LaunchRock.co. You can put in LaunchRock.com. It redirects you. L-A-U-N-C-H Rock.co. It is moronically simple. All it is is a holding place where you go in and type very simply, I'm writing a book. It's going to be soon published. Give me your email address, and I'll tell you when it is. That's it. 
That's it. And people can then go there. You can drive track of there while people are waiting on it. And you can start collecting your list of people and then tell them all once your book is launched. It is never, ever, ever too early to start your list. Yeah, so as you're bragging about NaNoWriMo and this thing that you're doing and how you, you know, you've hit writer's block or you're plowing through or whatever is going on, and people ask you about your book, you can send them here, right? Don't wait until December 1st to start building buzz and then being disappointed because you're trying to do it all at once. This is a fantastic way to, you know, you can insert this into every conversation that you have when you, if somebody is genuinely interested about your nano project. Yeah, and if you want to see how it looks, go to brewdiet.com. Boop, 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 boop. You can see how that actually looks because that book should be out soon. It wasn't a nano book, but close enough. All right, Jeff, what do you have down as our second step? Well, I think sharing your progress is the second thing that you should do. Um, you know, be generate excitement, tying into the first one, as you go along. Within the nano community, you can update your word count, and you can share that with friends and people who are rooting you on. Um, it, it's it's self-motivational. Um, it builds awareness of, of what you're trying to do. Um, it connects everything together, and a lot of people either go heads down and just write in a tiny little corner, um, or they post everything and blather like crazy and bore everyone. Split the difference and share the progress and save the content for when it's really refined later on. Yeah, good, good suggestion. Nano makes it easy to share, but they really make it easy to share within other nanoers, and that's great for motivation, but find ways to go beyond the nano audience because that's who you really want to buy your book. Yeah, exactly. All right. You want to handle number three? Number three, editors. Oh, my God, editors. Oh, my God, editors. It is, in my opinion, also a great time for you to start thinking about who it is you want to edit your book. Because if you're serious and you want to publish this, you must have an editor. You can't do it yourself. You probably need more than one. If you're writing a novel and it's your first time ever, you might need to get with a developmental editor to help you figure out the plot and structure and things like that. Start sourcing them out right now. If you can find one during Nano, then that person can start talking about the project they're soon going to start working on, or perhaps even they're working on it as you're writing along. That's fine. That's one more voice out there going, something great, something great. And that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to build on this one again because I think it is... If I had to pick one thing that is most abused in the nano process, it's getting an editor. If you're really yep. doing nano heads down, plowing through, cranking out words, I mean, the idea is to get moving, to get yourself out of the trap of editing as you go. Now, I did nano, oh, gee, like six, seven years ago now at this point, and it was a great experience, but when I got done and I reread what I had, it wasn't nearly as coherent as I thought. And I'd have ideas halfway through that would send me off on a tangent. I'd have these great little loops, and am I going to keep them or not, or flush them out? Or sometimes I'd have to go all the way back to the beginning and work in this character so he suddenly didn't appear, you know, 200 pages in or something like that. You have to have an editor if you're going to take your nano experiment and turn it into a book. And as Evo said, getting one early on and getting him into that process is going to do absolute wonders for you. Yep. On that same note, let's talk about the other thing that you need, and that is a cover designer. You really need a cover designer. Like you can't edit your own book, I am of the opinion you cannot, or at least should not, make your own book cover. But wait, wait, Evo. I have a whole bunch of pictures that I've taken out and about town with my iPhone, and I have MS Paint. Can I not put together a wonderful cover with those tools? You cannot. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> you need someone, please. But here's what I can think of. You know, if you're writing a book in the middle of it, you don't necessarily have to actually find the designer right now. But what you can do in the middle of it, because trust us, you're going to need some downtime in here, you can go find covers that you like. Find covers that if you would have written that book, you would have liked to have had that. Or it's the kind and style of cover that I like. And start getting opinions from your social circles as you're sharing it. That's more content that you can share. It's kind of tracking your progress, but it's also getting people excited. And who knows? Maybe a designer said, as, hey, I think I can do that for you, and they'll reach out to you. So I'm going to touch on, you You said during downtime, and I'm going to touch on that for a second, because some people might be listening to all these things and going, holy cow, I've got like all these words to write, and now you're having me do all of these other things. A, you're going to have to do them anyway if you want to 
uh, have a good book in the end. And these can be really motivational. It might sound like we're adding more work on top of the already hectic schedule of nano, but if you get your 1800 words done for the day, and you sit down and talk with an editor about your plot and where things are going and, and get them engaged, where you sit down and start talking with a, uh, a designer about a cover, that's a great way to get you re-energized. When you're in the middle of nano, you're feeling like it's a grind and you really start to see this coming together as a project. So all of these different pieces and parts are great to do in parallel because they will help keep you energized in the nano writing itself. Exactly right. I'm going to leave our final tip to you, Jeff. Please let them know what they... It's really more of an anti-tip, I think, than a tip, but go for it. Yeah, so uh, two parts to this one. First, set a schedule. I mean, don't just think that when you roll off on uh, December 1st, you know, you're going to have everything done. Plan. You know, you, you, how long is it going to take you to get an editor and having the editing cycle in there and getting a cover designed and all of these different things along the way? It's going to take time. Plan a schedule so you don't either feel rushed or you feel like you're lagging. Now, the second part of this and the uh, killjoy part of it is that you're probably going to plan on uh, developing your book over the spring. Yeah, not December 3, not December 1st. Not over Christmas, uh, not after the new year, you're going to be doing this bad boy into the spring. Upside is, you're going to do it right. You're going to have a greatly edited book, you're going to have a wonderful cover on it, you're going to take the time to get it to a few beta readers maybe and get some feedback on it, and by the time it hits the bookstore, it'll be a solid, solid piece of work. Yeah, because if you ask any successfully published author, they will tell you that writing is rewriting. Even before you get deeply involved in editing, writing is rewriting. So that which you have done, you're going to have a lot of work to, to, to massage that. I mean, seriously, people, it takes time to do this. I write very short books, and I write them very fast. And then it takes at least twice as long, if not three times as long, as it took me to write them, to get them edited, to get them cleaned up and ready to go. And I've got a formula. You don't. You're just now starting this process. You are kind of reinventing the wheel, and you don't know the process. Jeff and I have done this a couple of times now, so we know the work that's involved, and it still takes some time. So plan and be realistic. Um, and please, for the love of all that is holy, do not publish your book in December, or I will. Take, take this podcast episode down and beat you with it or something. Yeah, I mean, every December we find someone who publishes a nano book on December 1st, and we laugh at them. Yeah, it's going to suck. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it happens. And if you pull that book down and read it, it'll be full of typos and issues, and it'll be a horrible, sad thing that maybe their mother will buy, but their mother probably won't even read. So be nice to your mother, be nice to everyone else. Use nano as a great lever to becoming an author, and... Uh, and look like a pro. Oh wow, I got all marketing there. All right. I think it's a solid plan. It's a solid plan. All righty. So with that, we shall say thanks for hanging out and watching us here. Um, we're working on some things to really help people who are in nano. I wish I could say we had those things that were done. Um, but we kind of gave you a sneak preview on some of the things we talked about, like Launch Rock. That's our, one of our hidden little beauties. But we've got a lot of more things done. That's part of our roadmaps uh, for digital publishing that we are working on putting together. We're working on it. We're working on it. We'll be there eventually. Um, so stay tuned to us here on Google Plus or anywhere else you can find it. And obviously, um, we'll be over at e publishunum.com. You can check out the show notes for Books and Beer at booksandbeer.com. I'll put a link into Launch Rock in case you didn't hear me spell it properly. I will be sure and get that up there tonight or tomorrow or whenever. It'll be up there again. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Yes, that is what we do. For my partner, Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for watching the show.